In this video, I want to talk about the idea of getting null results. So you do some study and the results come in and they, they're null results. What do I mean by null results? Well, uh, let's, let's suppose that you're doing um, a study, maybe a correlational study, and you've got two variables here. Like you have theoretical reasons to believe that waffles and intelligence are going to show a correlation. So you are expecting a positive linear relationship here, which means that you're thinking your data is going to show up maybe not a perfect relationship, but you're expecting something like this. You are expecting a statistically significant correlation between the variables. And instead of that, instead of that, you get something that looks like this, where there really doesn't seem to be any relationship, or maybe there's some indications of a relationship, but you don't achieve statistical significance. So you're in to relate this back to the idea of p-values, p would be less than 0.05 or 0.01 there. In this case, p greater than 0.05 or 0.01, whatever your cutoff is whatever point you say, that's the level of confidence I want. So what you're saying is, in this case, you're saying I'm confident that that is a statistically significant correlation. In this case, you're saying I'm not. So we call this, we call these null results. And you could have this with, just to give another example, if you were doing an experiment and maybe you have two different groups, one of the groups receives waffles and the other group receives a placebo. And your hypothesis is that you are going to find that the group that receives waffles, if you were to measure their intelligence, your hypothesis is that the people who eat waffles are going to have a statistically significantly higher intelligence than the people who uh, who took the placebo. I'm not really quite sure what a placebo would be in terms of comparing with a, with waffles, but you get a difference here, and it's statistically significant. That's your hypothesis, that there's going to be a statistically significant difference there. But when you actually go out and do your experiment and you collect your data, maybe it actually looks more like this. So maybe there's some slight difference but it's so small, it's not, you, you have no confidence that it isn't simply the result of chance. So again, here, maybe you have a p-value, you say, yeah, this is, this is statistically significant. Here, it is not statistically significant. And so again, we would call these null results. The reason we call them null results is because uh, these results fail to reject the null hypothesis. And again, the null hypothesis is just the hypothesis that there is no relationship. So the hypothesis that there's no relationship between waffles and intelligence. We're failing to reject that here because we, we aren't finding any evidence of it. Okay, but then the question is why? Why did I get these null results? Let me get a little more space here and move this up and out of the way. And let's talk about this idea. Why did my experiment or my, my correlational design, why did this not happen the way that I was hoping it would? What is going on here? And there are a number of different possibilities. So one possibility, one possibility is that the null hypothesis is true. In other words, the relationship does not exist. So in this case, maybe there really is no relationship between uh, waffle consumption and intelligence. We don't, just finding non-significant results doesn't necessarily tell us that. The fact that we didn't see the relationship doesn't mean that it's not there because the second possibility is that uh, you did not create the right conditions in your experiment or in your study. You did not create the right uh, conditions uh, for the relationship. So maybe uh, for example one possibility is you gave people waffles to take home with them this is maybe a longitudinal study you give them a, a year-long supply of waffles and to take home with them but they don't eat them as often as they're supposed to 
And so it's not going to have the impact that you've theorized because they're not actually getting the manipulation that you intended. So when, uh, when that happens, just as a side note, uh, you can actually check on that. You can test that in a way, in some way. So for example, maybe we uh, check in to see whether they've eaten all the waffles. We could monitor their waffle consumption. That is called a manipulation check. When we manipulate something, that, remember that's the independent variable. We manipulate the independent variable uh, to hopefully bring about some kind of effect in the dependent variable. So we manipulate waffle consumption and we hope that it will impact intelligence. When you're manipulating the independent variable and you're not sure whether you've effectively manipulated it, like you're trying to get people to eat differently or you're trying to get people to uh, believe something, maybe you want to change their beliefs about something or change their attitudes about something, and then you've got some other variable you think that change will have an impact on, well, you want to make sure that the manipulation of that belief or of their diet, whatever it is that you're manipulating with that independent variable, uh, you want to make sure that manipulation is uh, is occurring and, and is occurring at the level you you believe it's occurring at. So that is called a manipulation check when you in some way measure the independent variable. Usually we just measure the dependent variable, right? We would measure intelligence. But in this case, we can also measure the independent variable to make sure that it is being manipulated like we believe it is. Okay, but to get back to reasons why uh, we might have gotten no results, the third possibility I want to talk about is that the relationship exists, but you failed to detect it. And when I say it exists, I don't just mean it, it, it's a real relationship sort of out there in the world, but, but you did create the right conditions. So it exists in your study. In your study, the relationship is there, but it's not showing up in your data and it's not going to show up in your data. And why might that be the case? And how might you design a future study differently to give yourself a better chance of being able to detect that relationship. So that's what we're going to talk about next.